My friends, welcome back. This is Silver Slayer, the channel that brings you silver videos every single day of the week. So make sure you subscribe and definitely click the bell so you immediately get notified and updated anytime anything happens that's important. It's your one-stop shop, not only for silver, but for world news, geopolitical, fundamental, economic, everything, because it all affects the price of silver, so I have to cover it. But uh, today we're going to be making an interesting type of video. See, 2024 has a lot of potential for silver to break through the ice and stay above the ice. See, silver's it's like that iceberg chart. You've, you, you've probably seen that picture where it's the iceberg above the water, but there's a, the, the iceberg is massive underneath. People just see the tip. Silver is like that. But in my humble opinion, what I think silver would need to break out and not correct back down to these $25, $30 levels would be the fundamentals of supply and demand, the scarcity, the supply deficit gapping so far that we cannot catch back up, where the producers would turn into the consumers and the consumers would be turning into the producers where companies are willing to pay any price because they need the silver and then those companies are going to be fighting for the silver for example we could we could talk about uh, electric vehicle sector trying to compete with with uh, solar panels because they both need those but if there's not enough there's only so much pie on the table but not everyone can get a slice then you're going to have a situation where people truly see silver's value for what it is and not in dollar terms but for the metal itself what if i were to tell you that this is already happening check this out 2023 saw another year of a huge supply demand deficit in silver despite heavy investment selling and that's an important part despite people selling we still saw massive supply deficits and actually we're supposed to get an even bigger supply deficit because we exceeded 1.2 1 billion ounces but we're predicting or experts are predicting we're going to reach 1.4 billion ounces in demand uh, this year and supplies roughly 850 million ounces on a good year. The gap is growing bigger and bigger. But regardless, that's, that's besides the point. This is what I wanted to tell you. Check this out. The most significant increase in demand came from solar panels. In 2021, the Silver Institute and Metals Focus Group were looking at PV solar panels, it's PV cells for solar panels, using 110 million ounces growing at 12 to 13 percent per year. But in November 2023, here we go. The Silver Institute and Metals Focus Group revised the 2023 estimate to about 200 million ounces. In other words, in the past two years, over 100 million ounces of silver was taken by the PV industry, quote unquote, unexpectedly. But real quick, I wanted to mention something for you guys and gals. If you were interested in purchasing silver, I have an email for you guys, and I have some deals as well. I'll mention right here the email slayer at milesfranklin.com. Check out some of these deals. We have 90% constitutional silver, which is dimes and quarters for $3 over spot, right? That's that's a steal. Also, 10 ounce gold maples, five coin minimum, $30 over melt, and last but not least. It's Christmas time. An American <laughs> Eagle is the perfect gift, whether it's your second cousin, whether it's your wife, husband, whether it's your grandson, you can't go wrong. $4.99 over spot, no minimum. Last week, we had a minimum of 100, but we said, you know what? Let's take it a step further and no minimum. So uh, slayer at milesfranklin.com. We changed my email uh, so now it's Slayer at milesfranklin.com. I'll get you guys hooked up. We are going into unknown territory where demand is rising so fast, we can't even try to predict these numbers, which is scary. Because if we're trying to, um, especially the fact that this is the part that people really need to understand when they try to put in context how fast this gap can grow. A, a silver mine can produce roughly 10 million ounces a year. That's usually what they do. And if you guys don't believe me, Keith Newmeyer 
talked about this. The CEO of First Majestic Silver mentioned um, in a uh, Kitco interview, which right now it's temporarily down, but in this interview I covered yesterday, he says his mine produces around 10 million ounces. And then Phillips Baker, in this interview I covered last week, Silver's Role in the Green Economy, he also has a silver mine, uh, Hecla, Hecla Mining. He said also his mine produces around 10 million ounces annually. So we have 10 million ounces coming from mines per year, but demand is exposed to exceed 1.4 billion ounces. 10 million ounces is pennies, right? Pennies compared to this, this rapidly growing demand. Plus, even when there's heavy selling, we still saw record-breaking supply deficits. You guys really need to understand how bad this is about to get. But anyways, I just thought this was also interesting, 100 million ounces of silver was just unexpectedly taken. Remember how much that is, 100 million ounces. That's 10 times the amount that a, that a mine produces in a single year. So 2023 is another year we saw rapid progress in the solar panel industry. We saw huge drops in solar panel prices while the technology advanced. The drop in solar panel prices is making solar panels affordable, which means pe more people are going to buy them or be able to. And then in addition, the drop in the lithium and lithium battery prices is making PV the cheapest energy in human history, right? Silver, lithium, ion batteries. Uh, so then you have solar panel innovation, meanwhile, has reached an inflection point in order to increase efficiency 25 to 150 percent. More silver is needed for the future generation of solar panels. So if solar panels right now, not even including this this innovative uh, point that's going to take more, that's going to need more silver is already rapidly rising. So this is what I'm talking about when I say the data shows otherwise when people try to say oh we have enough silver there is enough silver in our in our reserves when you look at the numbers in the reserves or or show publicly um, uh, statements those reserves have mentioned lbma and the comex and lme saying their reserves are near empty but then people are going to going to rely on production out of the mines when mines are down and mining production is very low and it doesn't add up. It's not possible. And then incorporating things like this with uh, they're talking about solar panels needing to innovate. And then with efficiency, it would cost it, I mean, it would take even up to 150 percent more silver, not even including electric vehicles. Every EV is going to be um, or every car is going to be an EV within the next five, 10 or within 20 by the year 2030, I think it said. So this is what I'm saying, like when I do research. I put the whole picture together. A lot of people, they're taking bits and pieces of the picture and, and incorporating their entire, uh, their, their entire case off of that little piece. But you, it, it's a much bigger situation. A lot of people don't even incorporate EVs at all. A lot of the times I only hear people talk about solar panels. And at that, most solar panels are thrown away, have a very short half-life, thrown away, never to be recycled. They're thrown away in landfills. So are, are all of these points to a structural silver shortage for decades to come? Decades to come. Silver is mainly a primary metal byproduct, like I said, found by accident. So in order for silver production to catch up with demand, many new primary silver mines need to be built. But remember, those primary mines, in a, a good, a, an efficient mine, only produces around 10 million ounces. So new primary mines need to be built, and the silver price needs to be high for an extended period of time. And then even if that's the case, it's, it would be even worse, because then you would have everyone fighting since, um, since you know, these. let's talk about a company like Tesla. Well, luckily, Elon bought a, tes a, a, a silver mine, but let's talk about another company like uh, Kia or, or a company that's electric or a solar panel company, and they are behind on this or even they're, they're not aware of the lack of silver or what the the lack thereof is going to be in let's say five years and then you have people that were that are willing to pay any price and then people are not selling at all remember they said even with uh with massive selling this year we still hit record supply deficits but 
when silver is extremely high, I don't know if people will sell. I'm, sh I'm sure there will be some, but I feel like when people uh, break out of silver's or, or break out of their their perspective of looking at silver in dollar terms, I feel like people won't just sell as soon as it hits fifty dollars. They'll realize fifty that fifty dollars is nowhere near enough for an ounce of silver. Actually, no amount of fake money is. And even if people did start selling more, like we saw last year, heavy selling doesn't do anything because we still hit record-breaking supply deficits with people selling. And you could say, well, what about recycling? I don't think recycling would even put a dent in this problem. Well, um, what about mining innovation? Remember, a mine only produces about 10 million ounces on a good year. So what, where is the solution here? Mentioned over a week ago, gold broke above $2,100 per ounce. For the first time, silver jumped nearly $26, followed by both metals pulling back, which is a pattern that I've seen in the past. The rally was a reaction to a series of developments, depreciating dollar, falling bond yields, safe haven demand, dovish tone from central banks of the world, signaling a halt to the recent cycle of interest rate increases. His take is that precious metals run was particularly, or partially actually, driven by a group of funds squeezing the shorts in a thinly traded market. This happens in a bull market and usually marks the short-term top of gold. We've seen this many times before. This is what happens. Random little instances, usually on the weekends, you'll see like on Friday, silver do something very dramatic, and then Monday, it, it's almost back to normal, like it never, like nothing ever happened. This is definitely some form of manipulation by very wealthy people or very corrupt banks. Um, but anyways, such a sequence is usually a foreshadowing of higher gold and silver prices, and it's a buying opportunity on any significant pullback like the one we saw this week. Historically, silver tends to do well in the later stage of a gold rally usually hits new high. That means silver will likely test the $50 mark and it's likely to exceed it. And yes, if silver breaks above $50, wow, we would definitely see, um, I, in my opinion, $100 within the next year. I'm not saying it would stay at 100 but it definitely would because of that strong resistance level, the psychological resistance level. $50 in 1980 and $50 in 2011. It, if it breaks above that with decades upon decades of resistance being built up, just imagine. So uh, a lot of people forget this. Silver was $11 in 2020. March of 2020, during right when the pandemic, silver was $11. Think about that. 11 I was telling people to buy boatloads of it, but most people were selling boatloads of it. It's crazy. It's supposed to be buy low, sell high. Well, don't sell at all. Buy low and don't sell at all. But most people buy high and sell low. I bet if silver was $30 in March 2020, everyone would have been buying it. But since it was $12, nobody was buying it. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Silver is actually the number one performing asset in 2020. It beat every other, everything, Tesla stocks, anything, gold, no. Silver was the number one performing asset, but if you don't watch my channel, you probably didn't know that because since it was silver, it was swept under the rug and nobody talked about it. Anyways, I have a strong buy feeling once again. These are the top two picks. We're not going to go into um, these because we want to buy the physical, and if you wanted to buy at all or even go store it somewhere in a segregated account, at recommending, then go to Miles Franklin because we use segregated accounts and I will make sure that your silver is safe and Andy will as well. Um, just a lot safer in my opinion since I can I can ensure that my audience, my fans are taken care of and aren't going to some risky place or getting screwed over. Um, you know, I got you guys. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found some type of interest in it, whether it was educational or informational or at least just entertaining. Even if you guys didn't really care about some of this information, at least you watched the video and hopefully you guys just enjoyed listening to my voice. For some reason, you guys like that. I don't know. I love you guys, though, and I love that you guys are willing to do that and support the channel. And 
Um, I'm going to keep making content for you all. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you greatly. And uh, keep on stacking, my friends. If anything new comes out, you know I'm going to cover it first, or try to at least. A a lot of times I actually do. Um, Sometimes I don't, but you best know that I am going to cover it sometime that day, even if I'm a couple hours late. So anyways, yeah, I love you guys. All jokes aside, um, make sure you guys subscribe and like the video and leave a comment if you did enjoy this video. I'll see you guys actually later today probably. I'll try to make another video today. See you guys later today or tomorrow. Peace.